What's up, YouTube? Uh, coming at you again with another review. This is a review of my U.S. Navy diaphragm uh, Mark IV. Uh, as you can see, I have the filter removed. Originally, what I wanted to do for a costume uh, from the movie Dawn of the Dead. Uh, you should definitely check that movie out. It's really great. George Romero's 1978. They, the SWAT team used these, um, but, uh, you know, since they're from World War II, obviously they're not that safe. These filters do have asbestos in them. So originally what I wanted to do is cut the filter and remove all that nasty stuff out. Uh, but instead I just reproduced my own using cardboard. So yeah, there's the filter. You can see all the rust and all the yuckiness in the on it it's pretty gross um, <clears throat> then moving on to the mask um, not a whole lot to say about it its flutter valve is gone uh, its lenses are pretty fogged up um, I'm not sure how well you can see that but uh, yeah I don't know um, its face piece is pretty warped but it's from, um, you really can't see that, April 1944, so it's pretty old, uh, but I decided to do the review now because I'm trading this for an M17A2, um, so look for that review coming up, but uh, yeah, oh, and I'm also, um, trading this navy belt with it so uh yeah i just figured i'd throw that in there with it since it's navy and i'm i'm getting rid of this um yeah uh hmm. not a whole lot to say about it other than it's been great having it uh, I got this originally at a gun show with two other masks, a German, a GM M17 with the canister and mask in pretty great shape, um, but then, uh, and then, uh, a Spanish World War II gas mask, uh, all in a group for $15, um, which is an amazing deal. And then I sold the Spanish one and the German one to buy an M50. And you might think that's stupid at first, but what I later found out is that the German gas mask, that GM M17 that I got, um, had originally been found in Bellum Woods in France. Um, and that's one of America's like first real battles, pretty much. And... They found it, and then this guy who was in World War I uh, collected all this stuff and brought it back and donated it to the museum, to the Wyoming Museum. And then in the 1920s, someone stole the mask and uh, some other stuff. And then for 90 years, so almost 100 years, this mask, not this one, but the one, that, the GM17. Uh, had been missing for almost a hundred years and I picked it up with this gas mask and another one with it all for $15 and kept it for about a year and then sold it to this pawn shop and then the pawn shop decided to put on eBay and then someone in Minnesota told the Wyoming Museum that he thinks that they yeah, he found a mask from its original collection, which I don't even know how that guy recognized it. Um, and then the museum contacted uh, Presidential Pawn. The uh, it's a really great pawn, pawn shop. If you ever stop through Rapid City, South Dakota, I'd recommend going there. They got some really great, neat stuff. Even one of Michael Jackson's gloves. Um, but so they gave it back to the museum and now it's on display at the Wyoming State Museum in Cheyenne. And if you ever go to Cheyenne, definitely check that place out. And I don't know, 
maybe let them know that uh, I helped them get their mask back. Um, I was just like really happy to, uh, like at first I was like, man, this kind of sucks selling it, but I really was looking towards that M50, so I don't know, I was happy, and then I found out that it was stolen almost a hundred years ago. Like, the whole story is just crazy. Um, you can Google it to just search uh, Wyoming gas mask and like the first pretty much the first three pages have everything about it um, but it's like sort of for local history for me I'm like really happy that I was able to sort of bring um, sort of peace with something you know uh, not, not a whole lot of times people get to do that Unfortunately, I do not remember the person that I bought it from. Uh, he was very, very old. Not old enough to probably steal it from in the 20s, but definitely old enough to be, like, maybe the father of the person, or the son of the person that stole it. But, uh, unfortunately, I just don't think that, um, we'll ever know what, uh, what its past 90 years were like. But I'm glad that I was able to um, sort of complete that circle. Uh, it's a huge honor, to be honest, because I really enjoy collecting these gas masks and learning all the history about it. And to know that there's still history to be made with that mask that I'm a part of is, like, huge. So remember, um, if you ever stop through Cheyenne, Miami, check that place out. Um, tell them about my part um and if you ever stop through rapid city uh just go to their pawn shop and uh ask them about it it's i don't know this is such a neat story right there um so this is the last gas mask that i bought with that grouping and like i said i'm trading it for an m17a2 um but uh yeah it's been a great run uh the person that I'm selling this to is a um, pretty, I don't know, well-known person in the gas mask collecting group on Facebook. Um, I, I'm not going to give out his name, but I mean, I'm sure you can just ask him about it. Um, so yeah, I'm sort of like taking this piece of history and handing it on to someone else. and. Maybe he can do something great with it, too. Um, like I said, I use this for a Halloween costume and for a great piece of my collection. I have the Mark III um, and the Mark V, so look for those videos coming up. Um, but, yeah, uh, like, comment, and subscribe.